Today, in the year 2021, Portugal's borders look like this. But while other countries have seen their territory modified throughout the centuries since their creation or independence until what they are today, Portugal didn't. The Kingdom of Portugal came to be in 1143 when it won its independence from the Spanish Kingdom of Leon slash Castile. In the Treaty of Zamora, Leni's King Alfonso VII recognized the Kingdom of Portugal. And in 1297, the Portuguese and Spanish signed the Treaty of Alcanizes, established the permanent delimitation between the two countries and marrying the daughter of the Portuguese king with his Spanish equivalent. This treaty followed the idea of Portuguese king Don Diniz to establish a long-lasting peace and alliance with Spain, something that didn't really come to be in terms of military conflict, but which confirmed itself in terms of territorial changes. Before we keep going with the video, I have to take one minute to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Raid Shadow Legends, a turn-based battle MMM ORPG, a game where you can play against hundreds of thousands of other players. You control a set of champions, which you can expand, upgrade, and use together in different combinations to achieve victory against your enemies. Something cool is that each champion belongs to a unique faction, and those factions have a lot of backstory. Something I find important to become immersed in a game, for instance, the Banner Lords faction, basically medieval knights, with a massive kingdom in the west of Teledia, they are arrogant and war like and believe themselves to be on the side of good. You probably already know Raid from a lot of these types of ads, but they have some new features in the game right now, like the new clan improvements and a bunch of new quests which you and your friends in the game can work together on. If you want to get a huge head start in Raid, all you have to do is hit the link in the description. New players will get an epic Shornoru hero, 200k silver, an in-game currency, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard, so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in game. Now back to the video. Like I said, throughout the timeline of most countries existence, it is natural that their territory changes from at least one of two ways. First conquering new adjacent lands or having part of their land conquered by neighbors. When we look at nations like France or Germany, they are examples of countries with expansion and reduction of territory throughout history, depending on military successes slash failures, marriages, annexations. But while all this happened at first for Portugal, part of it stopped. Since 1128, when it was already setting the roots for its independence to its confirmation as a free kingdom in 1143, Portugal began expanding, mostly south against the Moors, but also with some attempts north and east against the Spanish, with these mostly being unsuccessful. But when they were finally able to reach the southern coast, they stopped. A couple more attempts to expand east were made, partly successfully, but by the year of 1297, Portugal's territory was essentially consolidated, remaining unchanged until today. That is over 700 years of no territorial expansion or loss, which is even stranger considering the many and sometimes extreme changes that were going on throughout the rest of Europe during these 700 years, with kingdoms emerging, expanding, being conquering, grouping up, Spain, France, Italy, Germany, Poland, Great Britain, essentially everywhere changes, except for Portugal. In that year of 1297, Portugal saw its last European territorial gains confirmed through the Treaty of Alcanizes with Leon and Castile, in which the Spanish kingdoms granted Portugal the small areas of Castelo Rodrigo, Almeida and Sabugal up north, as well as the larger Mora and Olivença in the south. Olivença is still a disputed territory between Portugal and Spain today. The 1297 borders were respected for a long time, but in the early 19th century it was occupied by Spain. The 15 Treaty of Vienna technically restored it to Portugal, but the Spanish didn't follow it. Today, it is effectively a part of Spain and administered by them. However, the Portuguese consider the territory to be legally theirs and don't relinquish their claim. But it's been so long that nobody really cares about it enough for it to damage the relationship between the two countries. It's in practice a single change to the borders, but technically not since there's no Portuguese recognition. So, why? Why did Portugal get to 1297 and just stop expanding? Right now you're probably thinking, well, they did expand. They set out west into the ocean and colonized South America, Africa, even parts of Asia through their colonial empire. And while that's true, it was precisely just that, a colonial empire, which we know from history was simply temporary. Not to mention other countries with colonial empires like France, Great Britain, Spain, or even Germany saw that overseas expansion along with territorial changes in Europe. So why was Portugal different? And why did it not expand any further or get any of its homeland 
conquered. The geographic location of the country certainly has a key role. It's on the outskirts of Europe, its only land neighbor has been Spain for a long time, ever since the Moors were expelled from the Iberian Peninsula, and so this both meant that there was usually nobody to invade them other than the Spanish, and also that there was no one for them to invade other than the Spanish. I mean, I guess they could hop on a boat and go attack France or something, but it wouldn't make much sense to have an isolated piece of land in another country separated from the mainland. And the biggest issue was probably another, which I think also justifies the fact they didn't usually attempt to invade Spain, they just weren't strong enough. So in order to better understand why and how they kept their continental borders unchanged, let's take a look at the two main types of moments that could have caused these changes. First, times when they tried to expand their land but didn't succeed, and then times when others attempted to conquer them but also failed. Ever since it became a republic, Portugal has been directly involved in only two wars, World War I and their terrible colonial war. But none of these took place in their actual home territory. Their contingent in World War I fought in France slash Belgium, and their colonial war was throughout Africa. So we can focus only on the wars which took place during the time of the monarchy, starting in this chosen year of 1297 up to 1910. So when did Portugal try to expand but failed? Honestly, very rarely. After the Portuguese Reconquista was finished by 1249 with the conquest of Faru from the Almohad Caliphate, Portuguese incursions against the Moors were mostly on the side of the Spanish, attempting to help them conquer their southern territory. There was rarely any attempt of territorial gain by the Portuguese themselves. For instance, in 1342, they aided Castile in the siege of Algeciras, which after victory was exclusively under Spanish rule. In 1415, they successively expanded into Ceuta in North Africa, but this can be seen as more of the start of their colonial empire rather than expanding the continental territory. After all, it is in Africa, not Europe, plus it's no longer Portuguese having then been transferred to Spain. In 1475, they saw an opportunity and pretty much went all out in the War of Castilian Succession, attempting to enforce the claim of Joana, wife of Portuguese King Afonso V, as ruling monarch of Castile. If they had succeeded, a personal union would have been formed and almost all of the Iberian Peninsula would be united with Portugal at the command. Despite a few initial successes by the supporters of Joana and the support of France even, a lack of military aggressiveness by the Portuguese and a failure to achieve victory at the Battle of Toru led to the disintegration of Joana's alliance and the recognition of Isabella of Aragon as Spanish queen. And other than these, all of Portugal's offensive wars were abroad in South America, Africa, India or Asia, even if against other European powers, what was at stake were colonial domains and not continental Europe. There was, however, somewhat of an exception, which I wanted to address last in this topic because it helps us smoothly transition into the next. The attempted Portuguese conquest of Alcácer Quibir, in which Portugal's young king Sebastião I invaded northern Morocco with little preparation, experience and small chance of victory. 23,000 men at the command of the Portuguese king were easily defeated by between 50 to 100,000 Moroccans. Out of the 23,000, 8,000 were killed and 15,000 captured. Among them was the Portuguese king himself, who being childless left Portugal without a monarch, forcing them into the rule of the Spanish and creating the Iberian Union from 1580 to 1640. And this helps us transition to the next topic of why Portugal was also never conquered, at least permanently. That 1297 treaty seeked to form a defensive and long-lasting alliance with the Spanish kingdoms. And while they did leave each other alone for most of the time, even sometimes helping each other expel the Moors from the south of the peninsula, there was by no means an eternal peace. This period of Iberian Union is an example, with the Portuguese having to rise up and rebel in order to restore their independence. The 1640 War of Restoration saw Portugal with the aid of England and also France face off against Spain and win, expelling Spanish rule from their territory and restoring the original 1297 borders, as well as all colonial possessions except Ceuta and others which had already been lost in wars against the Dutch during the Iberian Union. Earlier on in history there was another Portuguese interregnum in 1383 when another king had died without a male heir. War with Castile followed, who I assumed claimed the Portuguese throne, but again 
Portugal resisted and, with the aid of the English, were victorious against the Spanish at the Battle of Aljubarrota, confirming their independence and necessarily their borders. Spain invaded Portugal again in 1762 as a part of the Seven Years' War, in which Britain and France fought, each with the support of Portugal and Spain, respectively. Spanish forces entered Portugal, but after occupying some fortresses, they were confronted with a national uprising. Taking advantage of the mountainous terrain, the locals inflicted heavy losses on the invaders and practically cut off their supply lines with Spain, then being defeated in battle against the Portuguese and British. Here we start to clearly notice a trend that helped Portugal not lose its home territory. They guarantee that their oldest allies, the British, would not allow for Spain to take over and were almost always ready to stand besides them. The last time anyone ever tried invading Portugal in Europe and thus put at risk these 1297 borders was during the Napoleonic Wars in the early 1800s. Napoleon, angry at Portugal for not following the French continent continental blockade against the British decided to invade them. At one point, the Spanish had already been defeated too and so aided the French in this invasion. French General Junot even occupied Lisbon after the Portuguese royal family fled to Brazil. The French took over the administration of the entire country and disbanded the Portuguese army. But soon after, the Portuguese began revolting against their occupiers at the same time as the Spanish did the same. Oddly enough, here it was the old invaders of Portugal who, when also revolting against the French, helped the Portuguese also reconquer their independence. In fact, it was even a division of Spanish soldiers commanded by General Domingo Belesta who captured the French contingency and general in Porto and called on the Portuguese to reclaim their independence and rally against the French, then slowly spreading south until the French were fully defeated and expelled. They tried to invade two more times, first in 1809, being defeated by the Portuguese army, now reorganized by British General Beresford and counting with many British troops at their side, and finally in 1810, when another British General Wellington defeated the French forces with the Portuguese English army using a set of 152 fortifications north of Lisbon, the famous lines of Torres Vedras. After this, no other military force attempted to invade Portugal in Europe. So, in summary, Portugal's borders have remained unchanged since 1297 because, one, whenever they attempted to expand their territory, they lost, and they didn't try often because, as was evident in their defeats, they did not have a strong enough military to face off against their only European land neighbor, Spain, and they were also usually concerned with so many other internal troubles to even think about expanding. Two, whenever they were invaded, the invaders also failed. It seems that while the Portuguese might not have been strong enough to invade, they were certainly strong enough to resist invasion. The almost permanent aid of the English or British in these times of wars was tremendously important as well, and other sporadic details such as simultaneous revolts in Spain, etc. Three, because realizing this, they were both not invaded very often but also didn't bother invading other European powers, instead focusing on expanding overseas and establishing a very decent-sized colonial empire. And four, Portugal is one of the few nations in the world that pretty much never had any relevant separatist movements. They were the separatist movement, achieving their independence very early on. And so, while the other countries of Europe perhaps saw parts of their territory go away with local movements seeking independence, this was not the case here. Essentially, avoiding war, not being strong enough to invade, but too strong to be conquered, having the right friends, and geographic limitations. That, very roughly, is how Portugal has maintained their borders unchanged since 1297, being one of the countries in the world with the oldest borders. Thanks so much for watching this video, subscribe if you want, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.